So welcome everybody. Welcome to um, Energy Play Shop number 16. Today is August 25th, 2022. The theme for tonight is tracking energy. And um, so I just want to um, look yeah. at the agenda for this evening. Okay, hang on. Let me just grab the agenda for this evening. Where is it? I remember. Oh, gosh. This one here. Ah, okay. Here it is. Agenda for this evening is so we're doing, we are right in the, the welcome now. And um, hang on, I actually just want to make sure that everybody is muted so there's not too much noise going on. And then we'll do a presence meditation very shortly. And then we'll go right into tracking energy. So let's, uh, let's come back a little bit. So questions, anybody has questions? Because last week we covered how to let go of um, programs present life programs and past life programs as well. So any questions so far about last week? No, not from me. Okay, wow, good. It, yeah. was, it was wonderful last Guys, last... you guys got it all. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. In that case, let's just go right into the presence meditation then. So let's just take a deep breath in. And then let it all go. Take another deep breath in. Slowly inflate your lungs. Inflate your diaphragm. All your... Use your full body. Just inflate. Until you can breathe in no more, then just let it all go slowly. Breathe in one more time. And let it all go. Continue to breathe at your own rhythm with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for you. As you breathe in, set the intention that you want to bring back all parts of yourself back into you. You just call back all of your energies energies that you may have sent out earlier today because you were thinking of someone else or something else. Just get back all of those attention. Get back all of those energies. Gather it all the way back inside yourself. As you breathe in, take back in all of those energies. And as you breathe out, let go of anything that does not support you in this moment. So breathe in deeply. And this time as you breathe in, set the intention that you want to call back in your soul. In case your soul have been doing something else. And also call in the highest vibration version of you that you have access to in this moment. The highest vibration version of yourself that is beyond space time. Call that in so that you can connect to that version of yourself and have easy access to that version of yourself. 
And also as you call back in the energies, just pay attention to what's happening inside your body and really feel after you start to call back all of those energies, call back your connections to the parts of you that are beyond this body that you actually feel, have an experience of yourself being more solid. That there truly is more of you that is available for you inside your body. And when you feel solid, more grounded within your body, then you can come all the way back into the room. And open your eyes and place your attention back into the room again. So welcome back. Let's take a look at the agenda. So we're starting to talk about tracking energy. So first, I just actually just want to um, give a short explanation to what I, what do I mean by tracking energy? Um, it's, and also um, what is the benefits? Why, why bother to talk about it? Why bother to learn to, to do that? We, tracking energy is a very general term. So what do I mean by tracking energy is really to be able to tune into a certain frequency. So for example, um, the Dalai Lama is a human being, uh, a person, and the Dalai Lama is a certain frequency. So if you want to, um, so anything that has a frequency, we can actually tap into that frequency and get information about that. So let's say, let's not even talk about some something, somebody as um, remote as a Dalai Lama. Let's, let's talk about somebody that is closer to our lives. It could be your daughter, your son, your parents, whomever it is that's close to you. And you kind of know, you're familiar with them and you kind of know who they are. And, and so tracking energy is really about tuning into that energy signature of that person. Let's say I want to track my mother, for example. I like, I've known my mother all my life. So it's really quite easy. It should be quite easy for me to just track or just focus in on the energy signature of my mother. And when I am able to um, focus in on the energy signature, even though she's, she does not live with me in the same household, um, even though she's not that far away from me, from, but let's say um, she is not feeling too well and I don't have enough I don't have time to go over and check in her actually what I can do is instead of going there in person what I can do is actually just check in to that energy signature because as soon as I can track that energy I would be able to get a feel of how that energy signature is I would be able to find out, okay, it, does she, does it feel like this person is tired or does it feel like this person is doing okay or does it feel like this person is in trouble and really in need of assistance? 
So when I can tune into, when I can actually track that energy, I will be able to get information about that. And you can see how that can be useful and beneficial is that you can actually um, kind of uh, be able to peep into what's going on with that, that energy signature and, um, and get information from there. And I just want to give the, the, the story that um, I'm quite sure you, Oh, I'm not sure, but um, most likely some of you, if not all of you, should, um, have heard that in how long ago? I think it's maybe about um, 20 odd years ago, uh, the, the US government had a, a program that's called, um, it's, it's been called various names, but I think the one of one of the names is called Stargate. It's actually to that they have a department where they um, they train these people with special abilities to be able to remotely view what's happening. Um, let's say in or get get information, intel, intelligence about something or someone that's that is at the other side of the globe. Um, the use for that is really they can um, check into a certain location that's within an enemy, geographically behind enemy lines and be able to find out things about that location before they actually send some, some people there to, let's say, um, to, 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 to recover some, some recover a, a hostage, for example, they can actually send in the remote viewing spies to look at how many people are there, what's the situation like, and what kind of building, where they are, and be able to get that kind of information before they actually send in their troops behind enemy lines in order to um, make it higher probability that their operations would be successful. So I, I think that that um, department uh, within USA, uh, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a while since I, I um, gotten the information from there. So the, the actual number of years, I, has, I have the impression that it's about, or oh, probably um, within the span of about 20 to 30 years, they, they actually did that. And they actually have fairly good results. However, it um, at first it was really, that department was really developed in a, um, kind of more secrecy. And then and at a time when the Cold War with Russia was was really at the height of that. So they don't want to actually do things to trigger an all-out war, but they want to get information, intelligence, without um, doing things to actually provoke. So they, they sent in psychic spies to remote view and get information about that. And also they know that the other side, the Russia, they're actually uh, are the Russians are doing that as well. They, the Russians actually have a um, a rather um, much more elaborate and successful a operations of a division of people that does that, and they remote view both the U.S. Um, intelligence information and I'm pretty sure I don't think it was actually ever confirmed but I'm pretty sure that um, China has that as well and the, any other um, nationalities have that I'm not sure but I do know from from my own intelligence that yes China has that as well 
um, why? Because they're, they're, it's, um, I know somebody who, who used to do that kind of work, used to, um, as in maybe 40, 50 years ago, used to do that. So that's why I, I know that, yeah, they, China does have that as well. So these sort of psychic spies is they use the, their um, ability to get information out of thin air. And there is a whole protocol for, or, or a methodology to do remote viewing properly. And I didn't use the, the, the terminology of remote viewing. I actually call it tracking energy because remote viewing is a very specific um, protocol. Whereas tracking energy, anybody, even without training, you and I, we can do it. And it's, it's, fairly easy. So that's what I want to talk about this evening. And I do know that it is definitely um, very practical. Um, not that we want to spy on anybody. However, something as, as simple as just checking on the loved ones or checking on um, what's going to happen um, about something that we cared about. So, and, uh, and also something as simple as um, finding out, let's say tomorrow we go to, to a picnic to a um, somewhere that's maybe half an hour's drive from Toronto, just um, as simple as just kind of remote view or just get the information, which is the best route to take in order to make sure that we get there in the shortest time and have the most smooth and pleasant um, driving experience. So that's, that's something that's very practical and absolutely doable for anyone. Um, you don't have to have psychic abilities. You don't even need to have a long, like, like many weeks of training, something that we can do very easily. And I just want to get back to the, oh, hang on. Just want to get back to the slides. So, so the next question to ask is, can it be learned? And I used to think that, well, yes, that's, it's, it's an ability, but it's, it's an ability that if you do a lot of meditation, you can, then you will get it. And that actually, um, for the longest time, that's what I believed is that if you do meditation, you, you meditate for at least half an hour um, for, I don't know how many months, and you start to, to quiet your mind, then it's something that you can get. And you can get to the point where you can, you can, track information and download information just because you you wanted to however um i think i'm more inclined to believe that that's not the case it, that's that's actually not the case at all is that it's it's actually becoming easier and easier for us to get information just out of thin air. Why do I believe that? Is that, well, the energies are really very supportive and we actually, um, the energy of the whole planet is supporting each and every one to open up that, to make that ability much more available to us. And also, um, actually one of the, 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 one thing that I notice is that we actually get that kind of information a lot more, even without me asking. Why? Because um, that's that's actually how it is. Is that we we are bombarded by information. It's just most of the time we are so um, wrapped up in ourselves. We we have so many things going on. We, we're thinking of um, at least 10 
10, 12 things right at the same time. We're so distracted. That's why we actually don't notice, pay attention when these information comes along. I can give you a actually a, a story about how easy, how easy it is that we have this information um, coming at us. For example, uh, I actually have a very good example, which I, I like to share. I don't think I've shared this with you guys yet, but uh, about almost two weeks ago, I went to Ottawa to attend the picnic. And uh, during that picnic, um, once I walked into that picnic, so it was like there's this road that we walk into the park and the, the, the picnic was set up so that the organizer's table is at the, at, at the, the kind of the entrance of that um, road. And then people were just sitting on, on the lawn that's on both sides and just hanging out and having fun and, and sharing food and, and playing games with each other. And when I walk through the, the entrance, they, they have a lot of information for us to pick up. And also they have um, some t-shirts for sale. Uh, it's, it's kind of a, um, a freedom movement picnic. And I saw a, I, I actually, I saw this, this is a, a hoodie. So it's red color. I, I don't think you can, you guys can see the, the color of this very, um, this is actually a very, um, it's, it's a darker red. It's, it's not as light as it is showing in the, um, in the video right now. It's a little darker. It's, 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 it's a nice red color. So when I saw this, this hoodie, the first time I walked past the, the, the table, I was like, that red somehow just caught my eye. Usually, I am not a red person. You can tell, you know, you, I usually have blue or green or gray, any color. I don't usually wear red, though. However, that day, that red, this red hoodie just caught my eye so much. I was like asking the, the, um, the young lady that's, that was manning the table is like, how much is that hoodie? I, I like to buy it because uh, I know that they sell these things just for fundraising as well. So I actually want to buy one to support them. And the lady said, well, you know, there's only one and it's not for sale. This is, this is, for, this is one of the raffle items. So I was like, oh, that's too bad, <laughs> the raffle, because I didn't think I can, I can win this. I just noticed that that this red hoodie was just blinking, 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 and I just couldn't seem to take my eyes off it. So, long story short, is that I bought the uh, raffle ticket. It was five five dollars for three tickets, and guess what? I won it. It's I got I bought it home with me like five dollars for this hoodie. It's it's a very good price. So, but how did I know to even buy the, the, the raffle tickets? I would have bought the raffle tickets anyways, because the raffle tickets is just another way of supporting them with uh, like just five bucks. However, for whatever reason, that this red hoodie has been blinking in my unconscious mind and it just got to the point where um i i have to i have to uh, because there the raffle is for several items it's not just for that i could have gotten the raffle for another item let's say i think there's a mug there uh, so a couple of, of the other things too i i could have put it on any of the other items but Somehow, I just knew that I have to get it for that hoodie. And, and even before I won it, I kind of get um, a tap from the universe that, well, you know what? Hoodie, hoodie, go for the hoodie. So that is really what happened with this is that information. So even bef before I bought the raffle ticket, the universe has kind of gave me some 
um, I wouldn't say it's a kick. It's more of a little poke that, hey, you know what? You should do that. You might just win. So um, it's a nice color. It's a nice red color. Normally, I wouldn't have done it. However, that day, that in on that location, that's what happens. And, and the, the moral of the story is that information like that is always... Um, hitting us. Uh, for example, when we meet somebody that even though it could be the first time we ever see that person, but that person actually is, you may see it as a body, but it's actually a, a spirit and has a certain frequency. So that frequency is beaming information at us. It is just that a lot of the times we are so um, we're so conditioned to look at the, the the surface, to look at the, the how the person's uh, look, or how, what age is that person, what skin color, what hair color, eye color. We notice all those things, but the last thing we kind of check in is really the frequency, because within that frequency is so much more information that we could have gotten if we only um, uh, were less distracted by the, the appearance and actually simply uh, or just focus more on the, the, the energy itself. So that's why energy tracking now, I, I actually believe that it's not, it's, it's actually absolutely a, we can learn how to do that. And it does not require you know, hours or maybe even um, months and months of, of meditation. So how can we do that? What's the... Um... So it can be learned. It is doable. So how can we learn it? Um, The easiest way to to really think of it is remind yourself that we we are creators. We can create anything, and our brain is actually so powerful that we can manifest just about anything as long as we give ourselves permission to do so. the The biggest block that I notice myself to have um, that's blocking me from getting information is really believe that I, well, how do I get information? Because we have been trained that in order to know something, we have to study something. So we have been trained that we, when we go to school, we have to look, read books and we have to memorize things and, and then we get tested on it um, during tests or exams. And when the, and the person who can remember the most things would have learned the most. So that was, the, that was our training is that in order to know something, we have to actually be exposed to it. We either talk to somebody or we, we um, learn about the information from a book, from experience. However, that's actually not the case. Information is always beaming out because a person, a book, or an idea, all of these things, what, what are they? Actually, they're just energy. And um, they're actually just a collection of energy, a frequency. And when we let go of the um, the idea that we have to uh, learn, we have to actually learn and study in order to know something, or we need to talk to that person, get to know that person in order to know a person. When we let go of that, and we actually um, remind ourselves that 
it would give our brain the permission to download information about that frequency, that person, that book, whatever, or that event, then we can do it. The only reason why we, we I, that really held me back was because I believe that, oh, I have to meditate a long time and I have to do all of these practices, learn things in order for me to be able to um, track energy. Actually, no, I can track energy by giving myself permission to do that. And also um, the other thing about tracking energy is that the way we learn, how we learn, We've been conditioned to learn um, by, the way we learn is that whenever new information come in, we would sort or integrate that new information by whatever the information that we already have. For example, um, we have to learn, you know, um, how to do, addition, subtraction, and then multiplication, division. And then we learn things more <clears throat> complicated like um, calculus or algebra and all those things. That's, we think that we have to do that. One step we have to learn one thing, one step, and then the next step, and then the next step. We don't have to do that. We can actually when we let go of that very linear way of learning, when we let go of that idea that um, that we need to in, in, integrate new information according to the old existing information that we have, when we let go of that paradigm of, of learning, then actually we can learn anything very easily just by downloading the information. We're not there yet because we've been so well trained to um, learn things one step at a time. However, being able to track information, track energy is really the first step towards that um, new way of getting information simply by giving ourselves permission and also getting back to zero point. So what do I mean by zero point? What really is zero point? Zero point is when you have no reference. So I just actually just want to stop here and um, and kind of underline that when you let go of the idea that you have to make sense of your world from old experience to actually just let go of everything and just be in the moment so that you no longer see things from past experience and just see things in the here and now. And just when you are who you are and things come at you, information come at you. And instead of reacting to the information from your old programming, it's just look at that information and treat it as something that's completely new and interact with that information from just zero, no baggage, just from no... Um, no no reference point and when we can do that when we get comfortable to be able to do that we actually can it's so much easier for us to download information correctly because a lot of the times i was wrong in getting information is because when i have information coming in when i ask a question and then information coming in and i interpret that information from um, my own bias. So that's usually when I get it wrong. 
that when I can just interpret the information from zero reference, not from my own bias, but actually from just noticing the information coming in, when I can do that, that's actually when I am most um, accurate. So how do we do that? Can I ask you a question? Absolutely, yeah. How you can um, how you can get the information without reference? Isn't it coming to us automatically? Like we interpret according to our experience, or how you separate and go from zero point. Okay, I was actually just going to answer that. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So I want to, um, so how do we do that? We, we do that by um, getting ourselves into an altered state. Okay, so getting ourselves into an altered state. I just just giving you an example is um, recently I started doing something because um, last year I, I I I took a course called modules, and modules are these beautiful mandalas. I I, I think you probably all remember that I talked about that last year. I took it from um, Richard Bartlett, and and these these modules were just so beautiful and they actually have healing properties and I, I remember I love it so much that I, I wanted to actually create my own but I didn't know how to do it and he actually um, not him but his uh, co-presenter Chella actually talked about how she created them and she talked about this 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 process of how she created them. And so a couple of things happened. Um, and I actually got to the point where I, I gave myself permission to be able to do that, <laughs> to actually um, create a module. So not to create a module exactly the same way as um, Chella or Richard does, but to create a module from um, that that's from my own process so what I actually was interested to do is to create some modules these modules you can look at them as as like a um a spell or a sigil I don't know if you guys know what a sigil is it's, it's really a symbol that has um that has certain properties um protection healing those those kind of um, symbols they are called sigils. So so I have had the idea that I actually want to create a module that would be able to counteract some of the adverse reaction of um, the the vaccines. And I thought, well, you know what? Hmm. I don't know whether I can do it, but I I definitely would want to give it a try. So I just um, had, so what I did was first step is to actually find out what does those vaccines do? Because I couldn't, I don't know how to create something that will modify um, that the vaccine unless I know what the vaccines actually does. And I haven't taken one myself. So, uh, so I have to actually remote view it. So I actually go and remote view. Um, so, so the first attempt I did was I, I remote view and um, I got that the 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 re, the vaccine. I it's not all the vaccines, but I actually just focus on one one. One is the Moderna ones, and so I remote view what's the original idea of creating that. And the idea actually, what I got was it disrupts the um, signaling between, between cells. So that's, that's how it, 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 it works. And um, so it, it kind of has that effect. So that's the first um, bit of information that I got. And then 
the next time when I remote view, before I remote view the second time, what I did was really took myself into an altered state and actually what the other information I got was is that the the way Moderna was done was not just one sci scientist or one team of scientists working in the lab um, creating that is not is actually different what I saw was different um, people cooperating and each one was doing a particular aspect of that vaccine and 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 because of that the the way the the vaccine came to together is is very disjointed disconnected it's it's that's why it does not quite work the way it's supposed to so that was the other information that i got and i so um the the reason I want to bring up that this is that, well, first thing is I know nothing about that and about Moderna, nothing at all. But I gave myself permission to be able to look at the information. Now, is it real? I don't know. I will have to actually go and do a lot more research in order to verify what the information that I got, uh, whether it's anything close to reality or not. And the other thing is, is that um, when I, I noticed that the first time when I did my remote viewing is I came at the, the Moderna at a, a bias. So I have a certain bias so that's why I didn't just rely on my first remote viewing exercise. The second time is I really took the time to let go of my own bias before I did my second uh, viewing. And I got more information or different information that I, I think is, is actually um, is very useful information. So when we information is like anybody can do this anybody who wants to do it can do it the only thing is you have to let go of your own bias because when you when you have a certain bias the information is still coming at me when i do the remote remote viewing however the way i can take in the information is distorted because of my own bias. And when I can let go of that bias and get to the point where I'm just allowing information to come in without trying to put my own spin on it, that's what I mean by having no reference. So how you can do that, um, it's really meditation. So I actually want to take everybody into a meditation to give you a sense of how you can get yourself into that state. So 